Who want one last trip to the long trail? So we have some good news here today. At least I'm very excited about it. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero just revealed their new DLC characters. Now I do think they had some leaks, so maybe this is not a huge shocker for the people who are super tapped into the Sparking Zero uh, characters, but I think this is one, really cool for the game. The game is doing very successful, but then two, when you talk about the other game that Bandai Namco is kind of operating, Tekken. I think this is going to be big things for Tekken, and this is just solely my opinion. I'm not trying to confirm or anything or get you guys hopes up but i just am using this model of the season pass format and and uh going to be comparing that to what tekken 8 did and how they may be changing because you know if you've been paying attention to Tekken 8, they've been going through a little bit of a transformation period. You can argue that's what this whole year one has pretty much been a chaotic you know turmoil infused you know, period of change, of growth, right? Growth pains or whatever it's called. But when you look at the DLC for um, Sparking Zero, DLC one is Gamma one and two, and it says, and more. So what does that mean? And more characters? That's what they put in the tweet, but I don't know if that's what they're hinting at. Um, And I don't know if Gamma one and two, I'm not too familiar with who these characters are or what they do. Maybe we'll learn more soon. I don't know, but I wonder if this is a character like Smoke and New Saibot. What if it was like that, where it was like two characters who are one in my opinion bro that was peak mortal kombat noob cybot and uh smoke being together tekken should do that tekken still the idea dlc number two you have uh glorio and vegeta mini and it says more as well now this is referring to the dragon ball uh daima this is the new show i've seen episode one it's pretty good but it's just the beginning to you know it's not nothing to get super excited about i know they added like a new waifu character in there i can't remember the character's name she's like a pink demon or something like that they'll probably throw her into the game as well but right now they're doing this blue guy who they hinted at in the first episode is in many uh vegeta right as in in the third dlc it says to be revealed later Later. And I like this as well because even though they're giving us all of this information up front, you can still hold back on a lot of the surprises and things that you're really going to tap into, right? Now, when you turn over and you start talking about uh, Tekken, I did this poll two months ago around Evo time, and uh, it has 14,000 votes on it. And basically, what I was asking is should Tekken 8 reveal the DLC all at once, like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat? Now we can see Fatal Fury, I believe, is doing it with Ken, Chung Lee, and then something else. I'm not sure. Or should they stick to what they're doing now and reveal it one at a time? And at the time of this poll, it was pretty split. One at a time, one with 52% and 48% uh, percent voted all at once. Now, the reason why I support all at once is because it's the most consumer friendly way of releasing characters. This is why Street Fighter players were pushing for it so much because they used to get one at a time. But people got so tired of waiting for which character is coming next. And then also you are like in this position of do you buy the season the season pass even though you don't know what characters are in there you can hope and wish your favorite character will be in there but as we see with these you know new era season passes that is not the case season one of two of street fighter was very unpredictable well season one kind of got leaked but tekken 8 season one was very unpredictable mortal kombat you could say the same thing gone are the days where you can easily predict what characters will show up in this game and buying a season pass fully expecting your character no matter how popular they were like an armor king and anna you can't do that anymore right being able to purchase it when the first character's out or the second character um in my opinion i think it's not the most consumer friendly thing now there is some people who will just buy the season pass and they'll just play whatever character it turns out to be but there's a lot of people who ends up buying it because they are looking for a specific character and like i said in this era that is not um you know a good idea now the reason why i think all at once is a good idea and i'm happy to see what dragon ball is doing one you can argue uh, dragon ball is doing the all in one idea they have all of these characters here they're showing you a big majority even though it says and more it shows you a lot of what you would get now i don't know the release date on this i don't know you know the breakdown of it but 
they're showing you a lot of what you can get very early so people know what they're paying for now when you go back to tech and then you talk about doing the all at once one at a time is just a very outdated way of releasing stuff now with you know roadmaps and planning ahead and live service you want to give the players something to look forward to and you know clearly stating especially with the controversy Tekken 8 has been going through clearly stating what characters you're going to give whether or not they'll have a stage this that clearly stating all of that stuff before the consumer even spends a dime i think is excellent because you could talk about how they just announced this new stage for the winter dlc right that's a good thing the players who bought the ultimate pass they now have more value for their dollar but if you think about how we got to that point anyways it's because players were spending their money on ultimate edition which is like a hundred plus dollars they were spending their money with the making the assumption that they would be getting more than what they're actually paying for. I don't know if you guys get what I'm saying here, but it's all about the consumer being able to like understand what they're paying for and there be no miscommunications. I think all at once is the correct way to go. And you even have this third challenger comes in with Dragon Ball where they do this, let's show some stuff, let's tease some stuff, but let's just say and more and to be revealed later, right? So I just want to highlight this because, you know, Dragon Ball Sparking is the newest Bandai Namco game. It's very successful. And the way that they're doing their season pass is very different from Tekken 8. And with Tekken 8 getting all this controversy and backlash for not communicating properly, you would have to wonder in the season two, will they, um, you know, ditch the old way of releasing characters um, to, to adopt this new one. And then also on the topic of like uh, money, right? How much money would a corporation make? Because Tekken 7 used the same format that Tekken 8 is using and they made 12 million copies from it. The most successful, I would argue, fighting game to be created. It has to be. With the amount of money they invested with the uh, versus the amount of money they gained back, it's definitely up there. Top 10 easy, no questions asked. But if you're one of those people who are worried about Bandai Namco, you know, showing all of the characters at the start as in people not liking the characters that's in there and saying, no, I'm going to skip this whole year. We have evidence so far that that is not the case. With Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, they both have showed their DLCs early, season one and two. And even with that being the case, when those characters release, you could talk about Akuma leaking like two years before and then releasing, um, he was still the most played character in the game. You could talk about the same thing for Homelander, Omni-Man. So far, it seems no matter how early a character is, you know, announced, leaked or whatever, when the time comes to actually purchase and play that character, the players will still do so. When you look at the stats, they will be number one on the stats across many different ranks and many different player, uh, you know, skills levels right so this is just more of a reason why i believe tekken 8 should do all at once i am the biggest fan of like speculating on which character it is and looking at the details looking at the data if they do all at once that whole arc of content and enjoyment is gone speculation is gone but it's a sacrifice that I think needs to be made because when you talk about uh, players, you know, spending money and how much money they're spending, you know, we need that information and we need clarity. I think what Tekken 8 is going through is a clear indication of that. But I just wanted to make a video about this, uh, share my ideas with you guys. Let me know if you agree, disagree, 